Jack's Giant Problem by Katie Pye, illustrated by Anastasia Billick. Jack's Giant Problem. I wonder what it was. Remember the beanstalk that soared to the sky and Jack, the young boy, who climbed up it to spy. He found a vast land and a giant with gold. Smart Jack soon outfoxed him, or so we've been told. You see, all those stories are really not true. You heard of one beanstalk, I swear. There were two. Jack's mother, on finding their pantry was bare, raced out to find Jack with a look of despair. We've nothing to eat and no money for bread. I can't have us starving. Sell Daisy instead. Jack set off the next day, the cow at his side. He hadn't gone far when an old woman cried. That cow looks quite friendly. I'm lonely, you see. If I give you beans, will you trade her with me? Some beans? spluttered Jack. They are magic, she said. Jack eyed them with the wonder, but then shook his head. The woman was sad. Well, if you change your mind, go straight through that wood and my house lies behind. Jack watched as the woman then put her beans back. He noticed a hole at the base of her sack. I'll grab one, he schemed. Then I won't have to pay. He snatched up a bean, then led Daisy away. Hmm, that's different. When Jack returned home after selling their cow, his mother was puffing while pulling the plough. Ah, oh, that's the cow's job, isn't it? There's no need to work, Jack called out. Come and see, as well as some gold. I've got magic with me. His mother was puzzled. What does the bean do? Jack frowned in response. I do not have a clue. He tinkered and tested the rest of the day. Then filled with frustration, he threw it away. That night, a huge beanstalk soared up to the sky. Jack jumped out of bed and he gave a glad cry. We'll have beans for lunch. I shall climb to the top. I'll throw the beans down, scoop them up and then they drop. So Jack climbed up nimbly, and Jack climbed up quick. He climbed and he picked till the leaves grew quite thick. Jack pushed through the leaves, and he gaped at the sight. A castle, he gasped, and jumped up in delight. Oh, look at those triangles for those roofs and the towers. Jack snuck to the castle. He crept through the door. Then Jack stopped and stared, finding treasures galore. He greedily reached for a bag full of gold, then heard someone shout. He no longer felt bold. Jack frantically looked for a place he could hide. He spotted a jug and climbed quickly inside. But then he was baffled. Are those sounds of glee? He plucked up his courage and stood up to see. I wonder what it is. I noticed something through the doorway. And then, and there played a giant who, roaring and giggling, was tickling a baby, both squealing and wriggling. Free, fi, fo, fum. I sell the blood of an English ben. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. <laughs> Jack stared in surprise till he heard, Time for dreams, then cringed at the sound of the baby's loud screams. Do you think the baby wants to sleep? The giant was calm. He just told his harp, play, harp, sent Ben to sleep, Ben then slept right away. 
If I had that harp, Jack thought fast in his greed, I'd make people sleep and then steal all we need. Uh oh, greedy like a Nancy. Jack tiptoed inside when the giant walked out. Then Jack snatched the harp, but the harp gave a shout. Stop! Jack sped from the castle, the giant gave chase. Jack looked back in fright as the giant kept pace. He hurled down the beast stalk, the harp on his arm. His mother looked up with the greatest alarm. Oh, Jack, race down nimbly. Oh, Jack, race down quick. I'll cut down the beanstalk that should do the trick. The poor giant watched as Jack landed below. But hearing Ben's screams, he turned slowly to go. Oh, he looks worried. And so life got tough in the land in the sky. Ben no longer slept. He would just fuss and cry. Oh, it's hard not being able to sleep. But far below, things were now easy for Jack. He stole all he could, and he brought Daisy back. His mother received their new wealth with surprise. Jack dodged all her questions by making up lies. But Jack wanted more, so he set out one day. The giant has gold, I need beans right away. He searched through the old woman's house while he slept. she slept, and cheered when he found where the beans were all kept. But Jack was now nosy, and Jack was now slow. Jack pried, and he prodded, in no rush to go. The next day, a new beanstalk soared to the sky. Jack slipped from his house without saying goodbye. Away in the distance, the witch set out too. That boy has a problem, a lesson is due. Jack's mother went pale when the witch shared her news. She raced after Jack, not a comment to lose, a moment to lose. The witch turned to leave, then she smiled at the cow. I've paid with my beans, so I'll take you home now. Jack searched for the giant, then made the harp play. He felt pangs of guilt, but he pushed them away. He grabbed at the gold and he whooped in delight. Hearing his mother, he froze out of fright. Jack Winifred Jones, it is time you confess. That giant's exhausted, just look exhausted. Just look at this mess. Now you get to work while I try to explain how your thoughtless choices have caused others pain. The castle was gleaming, Jack now understood. He stopped the harp playing, prepared to make good. The giant woke up and he stretched, satisfied, then stared at the spick and span castle, wide-eyed. I'm sorry, Jack trembled, for what you went through. I thought of myself and did not think of you. The giant looked guarded, but Ben answered back. He cooed and he giggled and reached out for Jack. Jack won back their trust with the lesson he learned. Ben loved Jack so dearly they never returned. The days filled with merriment more than before. The castle resounded with giggling once more. E I O oh, um, I smell the bug of an English bum. The end.